I'm a certified sommelier and here are 10 wine terms everyone should know. Number one, primary notes. Primary notes are notes that come from the wine grapes themselves. So in this Pinot Grigio, I'm getting like an apple pear note. It's a nice fruit note from the Pinot Grigio grape. And in this Bordeaux, which is Merlot based, definitely getting some red fruit flavors like red raspberry, red cranberry, and a little bit of uh, plum. But these fruit notes are primary notes that come from grapes. Number two is secondary notes. Secondary notes are notes and flavors that come from the wine making process. So if a wine spends some time in oak, for instance, you're gonna get certain flavors. Those are great examples of secondary notes. This Pinot Grigio has not spent any time in oak. However, I'm getting a bit of a floral note. Kind of like a nice little chamomile white flower, very quite pretty, but this particular Bordeaux has spent some time in oak. So definitely getting a little bit of that leather, tobacco, mocha, coffee thing going on. So just remember, secondary notes are notes that come from the winemaking process. Now number three is a little more complicated, but number three is tertiary notes. As wines age, their flavors evolve. So this Pinot Grigio and this Bordeaux are both very young wines, but as this Pinot Grigio ages, much more rich, complex flower notes, and as this Bordeaux ages, a little more mushroom, truffly, earthy notes. So tertiary comes from the wine aging process. Number four is fruit notes and non-fruit notes. We talked about primary, secondary, and tertiary notes. Do you know what? Forget those, who cares? When you taste wine, you really just have to remember one thing, fruit notes and non-fruit notes. So in this Pinot Grigio, that fresh stone pear fruit and the non-fruit note was a great example of that flowery, pretty flower note. And in this Bordeaux, that red raspberry, red cranberry, a little bit of that plum note was a great fruit note. And a non-fruit note, because this wine spent some time in oak, that leathery tobacco, coffee, mocha thing. So just remember, whenever you taste wine, try to get some fruit notes first and some non-fruit notes second. Number five is acid. And you might say, why do we use the term acid? Well, a wine has to have good acidity in order to have good structure, in order to taste balanced. So in this Pinot Grigio, this is a very fresh and crisp wine. It's very tart, very fresh, perfect for a summer patio. This wine has very good acidity. I'd say medium plus acidity. And on this Bordeaux, I'd say the Bordeaux is a little bit softer, a little less tart, so maybe medium acidity on the Bordeaux, but definitely medium plus acidity on the Pinot Grigio. It's how fresh and how crisp is that wine. Number six is alcohol. Now we all know that wine has alcohol. Let's be honest, that's why we love our glass of wine after a day's work. But how can you tell alcohol when kind of blind tasting wine? Well, let's sip this Pinot Grigio. I don't really get a warming sensation in my chest. It kind of just goes down smooth and that's about that. Let's taste this Bordeaux and see if I can get a warming sensation from maybe a higher alcohol content. Definitely get a little bit more warming in my chest. Let's give a quick check to see if that's the case. Yeah, the Pinot Grigio is only 12% and the Bordeaux's 13.5%. So clearly the Bordeaux has more alcohol and I can feel it warming my chest. Number seven is body. And no, I'm not talking about if you've been to the gym lately. It's the weight of the wine. How big is that wine? Let's taste this Pinot Grigio. It's kind of smooth, it's kind of compact. It doesn't have a big weight to it. So I'd say this is a medium bodied wine at most. Let's taste the Bordeaux. This Bordeaux, it's heavier, it's bigger. This is like a 747, and this is like a private Learjet. This is definitely a heavier, bigger bodied wine. So body is just basically how big and heavy does that wine feel in your mouth? Number eight is tannin. Tannin essentially is a nitty gritty, almost sandpaper flavor in your mouth. It comes from the grape skins, the grape seeds, and oak. Let's see if there's any tannin in this Pinot Grigio. I definitely do not get a drying 
sensation in my mouth. And you know why? Typically tannins not found in white wines. Let's go ahead and see if we have any tannin in this red wine. Definitely has a drying mouth sensation. I almost need to grab some water. That's tannin. I'd say this is about medium plus tannin. And you might say, well, why do I even like tannin? Tannin's really important. It's part of structure in wine. Acidity, tannin, alcohol. It's all about combining these together to make the perfect wine. But tannin, it's just that drying out, slightly sandpaper uh, texture flavor in your mouth. Number nine is corked. Is a wine corked? First of all, what is that? Corked is essentially, if a wine is basically off, it smells like wet cardboard or uh, like a sweaty gym bag or dirty laundry that's moist and sitting in a dank basement. Corked is basically the wine is just not right. Now, sometimes Bordeaux and Tuscan wines can have some earthy notes like we talked earlier about, truffly, mocha, chocolate, earthy notes, but that doesn't mean a wine is corked. Corked really is wet cardboard, dirty wet dog, kind of that dank musty basement. And when I smell these wines, I get great fruit, great fruit, nice floral non-fruit, nice earthy chocolate mocha non-fruit. I do not get stank wet basement here. These wines are not corked, they are good to go. If you get a corked wine, send it back. And number 10 is decanting. What's the purpose of decanting? Decanting really has two purposes. One, whenever you're sipping some red wines, specifically old red wines from Bordeaux or Tuscany, when you pour the wine into a decanter or some glasses, it's possible that you have a bit of sediment. So what we do is we use the decanter and we stop pouring before the sediment goes into the glass of the decanter. But what I really like to use decanting for, because I don't often drink, you know, 20, 30 year old bottles of wine that might have a lot of sediment, I use decanting to help open up a wine. So by pouring wine in a glass, swirling it around like so, letting it breathe in the glass, or a proper decanter really helps open up the wine. It'd be like going to run a marathon. You gotta stretch before you run, you gotta decant before you sip. And as a certified sommelier, I'm gonna give you one extra tidbit of info on the house. Consider this a complimentary upgrade to first class. One term I hear all the time people use is legs. Legs is essentially as you swirl a glass, you can kind of see the wine start to kind of show on the side of a glass. And a lot of people think if it has good legs, it must be a good wine. All legs are is basically kind of indicating alcohol. There's a bit of surface tension and cleaning and soap you use can really impact legs. All I'm saying is legs, it doesn't matter. Don't worry about them. Skip leg day. Today's featured wines are imported into Ontario from Le Sommelier, a bespoke wine import agency. This is a beautiful Perlage Pinot Grigio. It's organic. It's really terrific. I don't often sip Pinot Grigio, but when I do, I do like to sip Perlage Pinot Grigio. And this beautiful Bordeaux, Chateau Lagrolet from Côte de Bourg. This is a Merlot-based red. Perfect for, you know, your Saturday night filet mignon, maybe a nice little green bean. Perfect for sipping by itself or an antipasti and perfect for like a main course. Both of these wines are available, links uh, in the description below with a special promo code. We can ship them right to your front door if you live in Ontario. And if you live outside of Ontario but within Canada, Zalto Universal Glass and Zalto Bordeaux Glass, we can ship these right across Canada coast to coast. Consider supporting the Flying Psalm YouTube channel and check out these great wines and great uh, glassware. Thanks for joining me on board Cloud Wine. I hope you learned something new. If you like this video, you know what to do. Feel free to like and subscribe. Until then, I'll see you soon.